你看衣服，哦，这是昨天衣服，哦，是啦，不是，那个我最爱穿这个颜色，哦，对对对，穿这个，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对咯，一张嘛呢？做咩？啊？嗰边呢？做乜只后边回来？哎<笑>、欸，这加深度呢？嗯、啊，啊，其实我的话，我只是懒惰啊，开始报告了。你们还有三分钟呢？不是，你三分钟。下面停车场也是空空的，啊，停车场也是空空的，啊。
That's right for another meeting. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good morning, everyone. Oh, we already went up. My sound is not went up yet. Uh, so, supposedly, we have quiz two this week, right? I mean, in the cosplay. But uh, we uh, combine quiz two and quiz three. And then we will do it around week 14. And then we will make it like a mock exam. So the question is quite similar to the final exam. And it will be a take home exam, take home quiz. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Great. How is the duration? Uh, one, two hours. Uh, one yeah. day. Uh, I will make an announcement in the folder again. Uh, so I'll just let you prepare. Was uh, reality hit us? Mm. <laughs> no time to finish lecture. <laughs> <laughs> no time to finish. <laughs> what? I mean, of course, exam cover everything, but week for the quiz quiz question will be similar to exam question to help you. Okay, yeah. I think most of us come in already. Xinghua? Xinghua? Okay. Okay, so um, 
Yeah, so we hopefully we can finish partial derivative this week and then we'll start multi integral. So most of you are not here last Thursday because of your midterm. You sent me an email. So let's briefly go through what we have did last week and uh, last Thursday. Okay. All right. So um. So we always start with a function of two variable. Right, we start with a function of two variable. So our domain is R2. And our whole domain is R2. So that the whole thing lives in R3. Okay. So we might have some surface. I have some surface. In R3. So first thing we look at is limit. Okay. Let's look at the limit above this point, A B. Okay, what's the value? What's the limit of the value? Okay. So what's the limit of the value of F at this point? Okay. So we look at the behavior of the value of f, how it approaches. So how you decide a limit doesn't exist. Okay, so as long as you found two paths is enough, right? at least two paths, you have different limits, then the limit doesn't exist. Okay, and then the next thing we deal with is the continuity. Okay, so limit we don't really care about the actual value, but uh, for continuity, we want the limit at that point to be equal to the function, the value of function taking at that point. Okay, so I need to fill in every hole. Okay, for continuity. Uh, Universe. Okay, so see that we still using the two of limits. Okay, next thing we look at is the slope. Okay, it's the slope or the gradient. Gradient, we also look at the certain limit. Okay, we still look at certain limit. Limit of what? Okay, limit of what? Okay, let me use another color. Okay, uh, tangent at a b. Okay, so we also look at a certain limit. So um, in two variable case, okay, we not just have dy dx. Okay, we have partial f partial x, partial f, partial y, because there are two directions you can differentiate. There's this uh, x direction, there's another y direction you can look at, right? So you look at how the graph, the surface curve along this line, okay? So you take a path and then go along this line and then see how it tangent, right? Make sense? Okay. So last time we say how how do we take so let's cut it. Okay, let's cut it as a cross section. Cut it this way maybe. Okay. So we get a one dimensional picture here. Okay. Let's say this point is uh, A B. Okay, last time we talked about this idea here. So how we get this tangent line, okay? We don't really know how to get this tangent line, okay? But we can look at the limit of secant, right? Last time we mentioned this. Okay, so you take a nearby point and then draw a straight line, okay? Straight line, you know how to find the gradient, right? 
So you just take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, any point on the line, okay? But if you look at the limit of this sequence here, you can see that this line here will finally approach the tangent line, okay? So this is the limit of derivative we are talking about. So how we take the limit? We take the, we draw the straight line to the nearby point. Yeah, we draw the straight line on nearby point. So we take y value of the nearby point, take away the original point, divide by the distance. Okay. So this part here is limit of second. Okay. Until we get the tangent point. Oh, tangent point is this one. Okay. So the main difference between one-dimensional and two-dimensional is in two-dimensional, we have at least two uh, derivatives you can do with respect to x or with respect to y, right? Because uh, you can see that our function is in x and y. Okay. That's why we use this uh, partial here. Okay. Partial meaning we have more than one variable. Okay. So if we just write df over dx, this means that our f has only one variable. Okay. If we use partial, that means it has more than one. Okay. So later you will see that these two notation come together. So you need to differentiate when we use d, when we use partial. Okay. Okay, so where did we stop last time? So last time we talked about these two vectors here. Okay. So if you consider the linear combination of these two vectors, you get a plane. Okay, you get a plane. As long as they are not scalar multiple of each other, they are not linear combination of each other, we will get a plane. And then this is the tangent plane. Okay. So let me write down the definition. So uh, since we got these two uh, vectors, and they are not linear combination of each other, we can take their linear combination and they form a tangent thing. Okay, so how do we form this tangent plane here? Uh, suppose F has continuous partial derivative. And an equation of the tangent plane to the surface that equals to fxy at a point x naught, y naught, z naught is z minus z naught equals to fx, x naught, y naught x minus x naught plus y f y x naught y naught y minus y naught. Okay, so last time we already learned about this uh, equation of plane, right? So the coefficient here becomes your normal vector. Okay, last time we already see that the normal vector is with. Uh, Vector fx, x not y not, fy, x not y not, one. Okay, so this one here is kind of special in this case. Okay, later we'll see a more general case. This one here will correspond to our surface here because there's only degree one z here. Later, we'll see a more general case why this one pop up. And then you'll see that these two numbers also form the part of the normal vector. So is it clear why we take subtraction of this point? We want the 
plain to include this point. Okay, that's why we uh, move our plane to the point. It's like if you want to center the center, uh, center the circle at different center, right? You need to take x minus a, y minus a. It's the same idea. Okay. Okay. So let's see uh, how these uh, how these things work. The equation of the tangent plane to z equals to 2x squared plus y squared at the point 1, 1, 3. So we have learned quadric surface. So what is z equals to 2x squared plus y squared? What's the surface? Huh? How? how 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 to draw? Anyone can call no. go back. You need to at least briefly have some idea, okay? Briefly have some idea. Easier for you to picture the question. What's the name of it? Yeah. Anyone can recall which lecture is that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we have all positive, right? So we have this case here, two square. 2 degree 2 and then 1 degree 0, uh, degree 1, and then all positive. So we have this shape here. Elliptic curvoid. Okay. So let's roughly draw it. Okay. So 1, 1, 3. 1, 1, 3. Maybe it's around here. So let's draw a tangent here. Tangent plane. Okay, last time we uh, I mentioned about this. So <clears throat> for one dimensional case, right, you only have tangent line. Okay. For curve, you only have tangent line. But for surface, you have tangent plane. Okay, so what's the idea here? The idea here is the dimension of the tangent space is equal to the dimension of your uh, surface or manifold. Okay, so here we have a surface, so we have a tangent plane. So this means that what? What's the use of this tangent plane here? So no matter how you pass through this curve, right? Okay, through this dot here, the tangent vector always lies on the tangent plane. This is the purpose of the tangent plane. Okay, so no matter how you walk through this point here, as long as it is differentiable, then the tangent vector will lies on the plane. This is the use of this tangent plane here. Okay. Okay, let's find the equation of this plane. So what's the uh, formula again? Anyone can recall what's the formula? Z minus Z naught equals to fx and x naught y naught multiplied by x minus x naught plus fy x naught, y naught times 
uh, y minus y naught. Okay, so what's your x naught y naught z naught in this case here? One one three. Okay, so you you want to find the tangent point, uh, uh, tangent plane at one one three. Okay, so uh, how you differentiate f with respect to x? Anyone recall now? For those who are not here, so how we differentiate um, function with respect to x, but your function has different variables, okay? So what you need to do is you need to treat other variable as a constant, okay? So in this case here, we want to differentiate 2x squared plus y squared, okay, with respect to x. That means we treat y squared as a constant. So we get, we just get 4x in this case. And then how we differentiate f with respect to uh, y? We treat x squared as a constant again. So we get just 2, 1. Okay, so this is partial derivative. So we want this uh, value at uh, 1, 1. So we sub 1 into x, sub 1 into y, we get 4 and 2. So all together here, what do we get? Size. All together here, we get z minus 3 equals to 4 times x minus 1 plus 2 times y minus Hey, sorry, one. Okay. So you can see that why we put here evaluated number here, right? Because we want just number, okay? We don't want function, right? So these vectors are some number. Okay. So we need to evaluate our partial derivative. So where do we evaluate? So the natural thing to do is evaluate at the point you want. So this means that at this point, let's call this uh, 113, 113. So if you go along x direction, your slope is equals to 4. Okay, m equals to 4. And then if you go the z, uh, y direction, you have the slope. Yes. Okay, so it's important that you can compute this in your exam. A any question on this uh, engine thing? Uh, so far, okay. 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 All right. Okay. Let's go on. So what's, what are we doing here? So if we zoom in, right, if we zoom in, we got a plane and a curved surface here, okay? If we zoom in more and more, you will see that this surface actually getting linear and linear. Okay. And then finally, you can really approximate your point on the surface using the tangent plane, okay? Provided you zoom enough. Everyone get this idea here? Okay, so if you, if you zoom in more and more, it is flat. This is very easy to understand because every day you are walking on a surface with this spherical, which is the ball, the earth. But when you walk on the ground, right, it's almost flat. Okay, so this is the idea. So if you zoom in enough, you'll see that it's just flat. Okay. So, um, 
So we call this a uh, linearization. Okay. Uh, there's some problem with your previous year not. Uh, I will update the not by action not. So we'll follow the definition here. So the linearization, <clears throat> the linearization is the um, tangent plane. Okay. So the tangent plane provide a linearization. So <clears throat> in one dimensional case, right? You can see that if you have a curve, okay, and then you have a tangent line, okay, you can see that this tangent line here somehow stretch out the curve, okay, linearize it, okay, similar to tangent plane, also linearize it, okay, and then we call that the linear approximation or the tangent approximation to be uh, this this approximation. I cannot say equal equal because they are not equal. They are approximating. It is equal at the point x y, right? So if you put, uh, sorry, it is equal at the point a b. Okay, if you let x equals to a, y equals to b, then what you get in the left and right hand side is just f a b. Okay, so away from um, away from a b, there's some uh, difference. Okay, if the difference is not big. We will say that f is differentiable. Okay. If the difference is not big, we will say that the f is differentiable. So we will say that f is differentiable if we can compute the nearby point. Okay. A plus delta x. So the nearby point can be computed by the linearization plus some extra condition here. Okay. So plus some contribution of x plus some contribution of y. Okay, in a controlled way, in a controlled way, then we say that f is differentiable. Okay, let's look at one example here. Okay, let's look at one example in a in a one-dimensional case. Okay, let's use one-dimensional case to talk about it. Okay, so <coughs> every time we say that. Uh, Y equals to x squared is differentiable, is differentiable, is differentiable. So why is it differentiable? So every time we say that y is differentiable, y equals to x squared is differentiable. Why is it differentiable? Because it differentiate x squared equal to x. Okay. So why is it differentiable? So let's say we look at the tangent line. Okay. Tangent line at zero zero. Sorry, zero one. Zero one. So for the purpose of this um, illustration, we consider x squared plus one. Okay. So if you differentiate this, you also get two uh, x. Okay. So why why is it differentiable? Okay. Because we can get the nearby point. Okay. We can get this nearby point using the linearization at any point okay so for example at this point here what's the tangent line what's the tangent line hey no 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 equation line right line equation y equals to one okay y equals to one okay so we let's let us look around right look around so um yeah y equals to one so uh, what should I say? So this is also following the formula here, right? What's the formula just now? Y minus Y not uh, equals to um, Fx of X not Y not times X minus X not. Okay. So in this case here, your Y not X not is just 0 and 1. Okay, and then what's your derivative? What's your dy dx there? Zero. Okay, so what you're left with is y minus one equals to zero. Okay, so you get y equals one. Okay. Okay, so uh, how does this uh, how does this approximate the point around zero one? Okay, let's let's look at 
let's examine the definition just now. Have this <clears throat> is equals to the. Let me write linearization plus plus some delta x and plus some delta y. Okay, if this is true and it is happened in the control where we say this is differentiable, let's see is this true in this example here. Okay, is it is this true in this example here? Let's say this is uh, one. Okay, and then here is two. Okay. So can you go from this linearization to this point or not? What is the delta x and delta y you need to have? Huh? Sorry? The difference. Okay, so in this case, what is your delta x? Okay, your delta x is one. What is your delta y? It's also one. Okay. So if you can do this in a controlled way, then we will say that this is this function is differentiable. Okay, you can approximate, you can get every point on your function using this linearization. Then we'll say this is differentiable. Get the idea? Get the idea now. Okay, so mathematics is like this one. Uh, we have some complicated object. We want to reduce it to simple object. Okay. The simple object in this case is straight line, plane. Okay, so we reduce starting curved surface into plane, uh, straight line, or any other, uh, how say, regular object. Okay, where we can find the gradient. Okay. Okay, so it is differentiable if you can find your value in a control way using the linearization okay so linearization obviously is not the curve right you see there's so much different here okay but if we can control this different as we like in a good manner then we will say that this original curve or function is differentiable okay so a thing is differentiable if we can approximate it using a, a linear object Okay, so this is differentiability. Okay, so let me tell you another idea. So, what is uh, what does uh, <clears throat> what does dy dx over two x mean? What does this mean? So this means that this means that at every point. The slope that you need to use is just two times the x. Okay. So you will get, for example, slope one at point one, slope two at point two. Okay. So these are the line you need to use when you have linearization at the point. So this two x here is referring to the all the slope at every point on your. Uh, on your surface. So let me just draw it up. Okay. So hope after today, right? <coughs> you are not just uh, memorizing formula. So the formula you are memorizing is the function of the slope. Okay, it's the function of the slope. Okay. So this, the slope, this number here form a function with respect to x. I give you one x, you give me a slope. I give you one x, you give me a slope, okay? So you start with a function. After you differentiate, you get a function of slope. Yeah, function of slope, okay. Okay, good. Next is, um, there's one, uh, condition to determine whether your f is differentiable is as long as uh, your partial derivative exists and continuous, then f is differentiable. Okay. <clears throat> so this is relatively easier to compute because you treat one as a constant and then you differentiate the other one. So this is easier to compute. Okay, let's try and use this uh, theorem and then try and prove that. 
this function is differentiable. Okay, because if not, you need to go back to the definition and then tell me how to get a uh, different value nearby. Okay, using delta x delta y. But we have this definition already. Uh, this theorem already. This theorem tells us that if you can find the partial derivative and then it is continuous, then it is differentiable. That as is a plane that uh, you can approximate every point around. Okay, so show that fxy equals this function is differentiable. So what's the first thing we do? What's the first thing we do? I saw I say so many things to you. What do you listen? Okay, continue with continuity of what? Huh? No. What function? What implies a function is differentiable? Huh? Con partial derivative. So find the partial derivative first and then check whether it exists, whether it is continuous or not. Okay. So what's the partial derivative in this case here? What's this? F with respect to X, differential with respect to X. What do you get? Okay, Daniel, what do you get? Differentiate the function with respect to x. Huh? Sorry? Second. X power 2. You treat y as a constant and then you differentiate. What rule you need to use? Product rule. Okay. So if you use product rule, what do you get? Huh? E, e x y plus x y e x y. Okay, good. Okay. Similarly, you different with respect to y where you get x square e x y so does this two exist near where's the point you want one zero does this two function exist near one zero or not? Huh? the limit exists right okay because they are uh, they are polynomial function and exponential function is also continuous so comp Opposite of continuous function is still continuous. Okay, so they are defined in particular. So they exist near one zero. Okay, one zero is the point we're interested. So are they continuous? So just now I already said that they are continuous because they are composite of continuous function. Things uh, fx and fy. Uh -huh. Composite of continuous function. Okay. So by the theorem just now, so by the theorem just now, F is differentiable at one zero. Okay. So if it is differentiable, right? Uh, can you find the linearization? What's the linearization? What's the linearization? Linearization is the tangent, tangent plane. Okay. So what's the formula of tangent plane? Huh? What's the formula for tangent plane? F, the derivative at x, evaluated at a point, multiplied by x minus a plus fy a b 
of YB plus FAB. Okay. Note that this FAB uh, is the Z0 we started with just now. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay, what well, we left to compute. So we still need to compute what is. So we are left to compute F10 and uh, F, sorry, Fx10, Fy10. Okay. So what are these two values here? I leave you to compute. Let you, yeah, let you see the formula here. So when you plug x equals to 1, y to 0 into the 2 formula, what do you get? 1, right? You get 1, right? You get 1. So both of them, you get 1. And then what is f, a, b? Yeah? f, 0, 1, f, 1, 0. What do you get? You also get one. Mm, you also get one. Okay. So all together you get LXY equals to one times X minus one plus one times Y minus zero plus one. So which is X minus one plus Y plus one, which is x plus one. Okay. Yeah, so we have a picture here. So you can see that this is the curved surface here, curve up and then and curve down. This is your F. And then we have a tangent plane cutting across this um, surface here. And then the middle point here is the one zero point. One zero. Okay, so you can see that this linearization here, right? So if you go to different point on the surface, sometimes you need to subtract. Sometimes you need to add to get the actual value on your surface. Okay, sometimes you need to go down. Sometimes you need to go up. Sometimes you need to subtract. Sometimes you need to uh, add value to your linearization. Okay. Any question or not? So far, okay. Uh, straightforward. Uh. Okay, let's push a bit further. Let's go to uh, chain rule. Uh, this part, right? This part, uh, let's hit this. You can try and do this differential. This part, I will give answer, but uh, this definition here, maybe not too important, but you can read about it. And then I can give. Uh, and then there are some uh, application question you also can try. I'll give solution later. Okay, let's do a bit further. So chain rule. I will introduce this and then we take a break and then let you digest during the break. The break. Okay, so what's chain rule here? So why do we need chain rule? So we have a function in terms of x, y, okay? But let's say we have a curve on this x, y here, right? So we want to parameterize our x and y using one variable, another one variable, okay? So, mm -hmm. that's right, right? Maybe, right? Okay. So in this case here, we have Z in terms of G and H, and then G and H is in terms of T. Okay, then uh, we have a composite of function. So when you want to differentiate a composite of function, then the chain rule will comes in. Okay. So what is the chain rule here? So the chain rule here is you differentiate if you want to differentiate z with respect to t, okay. So can you see that after I do the composite here, 
everything is in term of t. Okay, everything is in term of t. So how we do this differentiation here? So first you do that dz over dt equals to partial z over partial x times dx over dt plus partial z over partial y times dy over dt. Okay, so you can see that, see, we combine the two notation here. Okay, so why do we use d on z? Because z only has one variable. Okay, because I already sub all the x as and y in terms of t already. Okay, there's only one variable here. And we use partial, we still use partial on z because z can be defined in two variables. Okay, and then we define x as one variable in t and then y in one variable in t. Okay, so why do we care about this, right? So let's look at this example here. Okay. Suppose we have the z equals to x cubed times y, okay, where x equals to 2t and y equals to t squared. So I ask you to find dz over dt. So what's the first thing you will do if you see this question? What's the first thing you'll do? Huh? What's the first thing you'll do? I tell you what is z, I tell you what is y. You just stop, right? Okay, so the easiest way for this case here, you can just stop it. Z equals to s cubed y equals to 2t squared t squared. Okay, which is 4t squared and t squared, which is 4t to the power 4. Okay, so in this case here, you know that z equals to 4t to the power 4. Cube. Oh, cube, sorry. 4 cube. So you get 8 cubed. So you get 8 to the power 5. Right. Okay. So in this case here, if you want to find dz over dt, you just differentiate 8 t to the power 5, which is just 40 t to the power 4. Okay. But uh, we can use the formula of chain rule also. Okay. We can use the formula of chain rule. Okay, what's the chain, formula of chain rule? dz over dt equals to partial z over partial x dx over dt plus partial z over partial y dy over dt. Okay. So in this case here, partial z over partial x, we do it on x cubed y because z equals to that. And then dx over dt is differentiate 2t with respect to t. And then you do the repeated step for y variable. Okay. Then try see that these two actually agree. So if you differentiate x cubed y with respect to x, uh, what do you get? 3x squared times y, right? And then multiply by 2 plus uh, x cubed times t to the power squared, okay? So what happened here? You have x, you have y, you have t. So how? So how? So what to do? Okay, you sub x equals to 2t and y equals to t squared so that everything is in terms of t. What? Okay, sorry. So we get 2t. Okay. So the things here is everything not in t yet. Okay. Because we write t dz over dt here, right? So it says that z is everything in terms of t. But this is not everything is t yet, so we need to sub the variable, substitute the variables, so we get three times two t squared times y times two plus two t cubed times two t. 
okay my y is uh, Okay, so in this case here, for the first term we get for 12 or t square, 12 t square, huh? 24, hey wait, yeah, 24, 24 t to the power 4 plus 8, 16, 16 to the t to the power, t to the power 24, which altogether you get 40 t to the power 4. Okay, so we get the same answer. Okay. okay, my uh, this chain rule might be a bit troublesome. Okay, actually, it's not. If you go to a more complicated uh formula or case, chain rule will be more useful. Okay, because this example is easy, so it's easier you substitute first and then you differentiate. Okay. Uh, what else I want to say? Okay, the other thing I want to say is you can see that how this uh, 40 T4 split up into two, uh, two sum, sum of two number. Okay, so you can see that this 40 T4, right, is coming from something more fundamental. Okay, so coming from something more fundamental. So in mathematics, right, we always like to break down, break down, simplify into the most uh, atomic object, okay, most fundamental object. Okay. So if you want to solve problem in AI, right, you also need to solve the most fundamental object. Okay. Maybe the question is very complicated, but you need to be able to reduce it to the example first, and then you work from the example and then generalize it. Okay. Okay, let's take a break. Uh, come back at 9.05. literature 你要理解那个文献我这个是我们的汉讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们讲,我们
没有啦，就是 t a n g e n t a n g e n t 就是 t a n g e n t 我有这个我做不到之前吗？对不对？可以可以可以可以可以可以可以，一样的一样的一样的，那个 f x f a b 就是 z not 来的，然后这个是 z 来，这是 f 这个是 z not 这个是 f， 只是我们叫它另外一个名字，是吧？嗯，对啊，对啊，也也也也也也，对啊，因为因为为什么呢？因为那时候 Z 我只是 care about 那个 tangent point 上面的点，但是现在呢，我 care about 这个 Z 怎样跟那个 X Y 怎么变，所以我叫 L X Y， 懂什么意思啊？哦，啊，之前我不 care 那个 Z 怎样变为 X Y， 我只是跟你说我只要拿 linear commission， 然后拿到全部这些点，但是这些全部的点呢，呃，跟那个 X Y 有关系，也是。呀、yeah, ，就是有我选一个 x y， 我可以对应到下面那个 plane 一个点，它很远嘛，对不对？这样什么时候它是 differentiable 呢？ differentiable 的时候就代表我可以加掉它 x 点，加掉它 y 点，然后我就拿到那个 curve 上面的点。但是这个加法要 control， 你能 control 我吗？怎么讲？就是你不可以随便乱加，你你要怎么加就怎么加，就是它要有一个方法，它的那个方法就是这个 epsilon 的答案，就是。当你越靠近那个，越靠近它的周围的时候，你越越用你要用的那个雕塔越小。那我们我们有用到，用这个没用到啊？现在用到？我们刚刚那个现在用到？没有用到？啊，没有到？这只是 concept 吧 ？concept 吧？啊，就 concept 吧？啊，就它的 definition 是这样，但是我们没有去用这个 definition。哦、oh, ，我们是做到这边吧，老师。嗯，呀，说法我们只可以到那边，对对。这样子讲，我们要不要？就是我懂了，但是其实我们要用这个，我懂了嘛。现在你懂了，你没有很懂，我没有跟你讲。所以，因为我不想去解释这个什么讲。老师没有错，没有错。所以我们是耳心还是零嘛？啊，就是它小到它变成零啊。不是，就是他意思说我去它的周围。我去到那个 plan 那个 plan 的那个点的周围，越靠近的时候，我所用的 delta x 跟 delta y 要越来越小。越小嘛，小到我们现在用到小到还没有哦，是可以这样解释。先讲，像那个点上面是没有了，但是点以外就要开始有了嘛，因为它不是 normally 它不是 constant 嘛，如果 constant 的话就不用了哦，懂什么意思？大概大概。I mean constant 的话，你就是一个 plan 嘛，像它的 tangent plan 在每个点就是那个 plan 啊。哦、oh, ，这样你就，这样你，这样你就不用加东西啊。但是它只要是 curve 一点点的时候，嗯，肯定是有差别。OK， 明白明白。Yeah yeah yeah。Yeah。哎，刚才我们我讲 break 到几点？九零五。哦。对，所以讲的，那你讲 break 吧。好像是九零五。让我点一个笔，随便。现在开始啊！哎，没有没有，现在开始说。OK。吴静宇，对，高教的，林水龙，梁定一，丁文天，文天，对，对不对？呃，我教。我看看后面那个呃叫呃，呃叫嗯，叫什么？是不是两个字？嗯，啊，佳琪，哎，又忘记佳琪，佳琪旁边呢？啊？宋，宋子飞，再叫多几次，我应该会记住。宋子飞，啊，后面呢？对。
về hôm nay bình sự á liễn trình rộng liễn liễn dạng ok dạng 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 Chi chân nhạc. Ok. How about beside Lin Chi chân? Hey. Chia. Hai chia. What's the name again? Okay,重重重。哦，重开始。啊，你喊重开机。一个名字，王振勇。Okay。And then，王宇轩。Okay，对。王宇轩后面是周子康。Okay。Okay, let's start first and then take again later. Okay, um, so just now I didn't quite explain what's the control manner for differentiability, right? So the control manner is when you get closer to the point where the tangent point at, the delta x and delta y you need is relatively small. Okay, this is differentiable. But you don't need to uh, use this definition because what you need to use is just calculate partial, yeah, partial derivative and the linearization. Okay, linearization provides the derivative, two dimension derivative. Okay, so the linearization is the two dimensional derivative you need. Yeah. But this definition here, you don't need really to care because this definition require for you to prove this uh, theorem here. Okay. But if we are not interested with the proving, then the definition is not useful. Okay, but the idea you have to know. The idea you have to know. Okay. The idea you need to know. Okay. Uh, actually, this mnemonic, so you don't need to memorize it by heart. Okay, so there's a mnemonic here. So how to memorize this formula here? Okay, so first you start with Z. Okay, Z is defined using X and Y. Okay, and then X and Y are in terms defined by T. Okay, and then along this X, right, you can put the differential on. Okay, so when you go from Z to X, you could write partial z over partial x, and then the other x you add, you put partial z over partial y, and then you go from x to t, you get dx over dt and uh, dy over dt. You can see that you see if there are branches, I put their partial. If there's only single branch, I put d. Okay, this is matching up what we said just now. Okay, and then when we want to differentiate z all the way down to t okay you can see there are two ways here okay there are two ways here so when you go along one path you multiply the differential the derivative and then if you have different path you add them up okay so all together if you want to differentiate z with respect to t there are two paths here so you go down one path del z over del x times dx over dt add plus another path del z over del y times dy over dt. 
Okay, so this is a mnemonic for this uh, formula here. So far, okay. So good. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna to generalize this. So we have a. Uh, so we skip this application question. Uh, I will provide solution. So this is the chain rule case two. Okay, case two here. What do we have? Okay, so first we still have function in x and y, but uh, we have x in term of x and t now. Okay, so this is really a composite of two function of two variable. Both of them are function of two variable. Okay, so we will write z all in x and t. So in this case here, we have two variable in X and T, right? Okay. So in this case here, so let us write it as uh, G. We can differentiate Z with respect to S. We can differentiate Z with respect to T. Okay. Both of them we can do. So how do we do it? So we use the mnemonic again. So we have Z can be defined using X and Y. Okay. And X and Y are defined by S and T respectively. Okay. Along the edges, you can put the uh put what? Put the differential on. Okay. In this case here, all of them are partial differential because all of them have branches, more than one branches. So let's say I want to differentiate Z with respect to X. How many paths I have? Two paths. Two paths, right? Okay. So we can go along the right path, left path, sorry, and then go to the right, go to the left, and then go to the right. Okay, so these are the two paths you have. Okay, so go down the path, you multiply the differential. Okay, if you have different path, you add them up. So this means that differentiate z with respect to x, you get differentiate z with respect to x times differentiate x with respect to x. Plus differentiate z with respect to y times uh, differentiate y with respect to x. Okay. Similarly, you can obtain another one for t. Does it make sense? Okay. So whenever you have this chain, this chain rule, right? Produce the the tree first, and then see what how many paths you need to go. Okay. And then when you go along the path, you multiply. You take the product of differentiate. Okay. Easy to memorize or not? Hmm. Memorize the tree. Okay. You need to know how to produce the tree. Okay. Let's uh, put this into practice. Okay. If you don't remember, it's okay. Let me recall again and then see if it matches up what you think. So now, okay, we have a function of z in x, y, and then x and y is in terms of x t again. Okay, so let's write down this uh, situation here. So first we start with z. We have function in terms of x and y. Okay, and then our x and y is in terms of s and t. Okay, so what do we want to find first? We want to find del z over del t. So why we put partial on z now? Why we put partial on z now? Because our z is defined using s and y. Okay, both s and uh, sorry s and t. Okay, s and t. Okay. All right. So if you want to differentiate uh, z with respect to t, how many paths we have? Okay. So we can go from z to s. And then x to t, or go from z to y, and then y to t. Okay, so we need to multiply the derivative together while we go along the edges. Since there are different paths, we need to add them up. Okay, we need to add them up. Okay, so there are two paths here. Okay, so when we go along the pathway, multiply 
since there are two paths, there are two sum here. Yeah. Finish jogging. Uh. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's continue. Okay. Um. So what's del z over del x? Uh? So you differentiate three x square minus y square over uh, respect to x, and then you differentiate. 2x plus 7t with respect to t plus 3x squared minus 1 squared. Okay, so all together we get 6x times 7. Check your answer. See if it is correct or not. And then all together we get 42 times 2x plus 7e minus 10x 5xt and 4x plus 174t plus 50x squared t. You can do your calculation and then check if this agree or not. Um, Yeah, so what's the other method you can try here? What's the other way you can find del z over del t? Substitute everything in terms of s and t, okay? And then you do partial derivative. So you can try method two, see if they agree or not. Sub x equals to 2x plus 7t, y equals to 5xt into z. And uh, do partial derivative. Okay. You, you should check that they agree. Everyone okay? Uh? Happy with the calculation or not? Hmm? Not yet. Not yet, Felix. Not happy? Why? <laughs> You get something different or what? That's okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So I will leave you leave it to you to find the other derivative, del z over del x, which is 24x plus 84t minus 50xt squared. You can do it later. Okay. So that which one? <laughs> Where? <laughs> Is it possible that I get the wrong answer? But we can check. Okay. So far, okay. Can we go to the next example? Okay. Everyone okay with del z over del t? Okay, then we move on. The tree map will be given the next. No, no, tree map you need to construct yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, if your answer is wrong, right? So I have to give some time. Now? Yeah, working. Huh? But don't just aim for the mark of this tree, the tree, the circle of this. Huh? Where, where, where? 94. 94? Everyone got 94? Okay, let me check. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. 94, good. Okay, very good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay, next. Uh, how about this this example here? Mm. 
W equals to x squared plus y squared plus z squared plus xy, where x equals to st, y equals to x minus t, z equals to x plus 2t. So this is a generalization of what we have just now. Okay. At first, how many uh, variables you have? Three. Okay, good. What are the what are these three? X, Y, and Z. Okay, but you can uh, parameterize your X, Y, and Z just using S and T. Okay, so that you can write everything in terms of two variables again. Okay, so the question asks you to find, just need to find what is del W over del T. So how many paths to go from W to T? Three. So in this case, you have W, X, T, W, Y, T, W, Z, T. Okay. So the method is still the, the same. When you go down the path, you multiply the partial derivative or the derivative together. And then you have three uh, separate paths. You need to add the product, add the three product together. Okay. So all together, what do we have? We have del W over del X del x over del t plus del w over del y, del y over del t plus del w over del z times del z over del t. Okay. Oh, seems like I don't have this example. Um, okay. Let's together then. Okay, let's do this. What's this? So del W over del X would get two X times. You could do first and then we can check our answer together. Okay, I think I took mistake again. This one is uh, and W D Z two Z. Okay. A. Mm. So x t plus x. two times x t x t Two x t plus x square. Two t plus four x. Uh, does everyone got this? Seems like. We get so we get two x plus ten t minus two x t plus s square plus two x square t. Does it round up this? Hmm? No, I mean there's only one correct answer. Okay. Happy with the answer or not? <laughs> Why working not happy? Yeah, quite long this question.
okay ah. okay okay so we pass Okay. Okay. Ah. Okay. So move on. Okay, let's move on. Mm. Okay, we skip this one next. Uh, homework, homework, homework. Uh, how about try this? Okay, I give you five minutes. Try this. Try this. Huh? <laughs> hey, who is the new student that come in just now? Besides the time. Yeah, who are you? Oh, Lin Ye. Okay, okay. Who are you? Lin Ye. Yeah, give you five minutes, try this. Yeah, seven. Each in. Yeah, same. Ming Tai. This one is Song Hong. Okay. Who is beside Peng Xiang Yi? Xie Yu Xie. Yeah? Yeah. What do you mean last? Just now one? Okay. This one? Xie Yu Xie. How about beside Xie Yu Xie? It's Liu Chiaming, huh? Liu Chiaming, okay. This one, this one. Find the second derivative. Yeah. In the way. Um, okay, you Behind we tell is who are for you, huh? Jia, Liu, Xia, Liu, Xia, oh, Liu, Xia, Hong, okay, Liu, Xia, Hong, 
哦，吴承泽 ，OK OK， 这个 Next 啊，李杰，李杰，李杰，李杰 ，And then， 嗯，张清柔。洪家轩啊，比赛青龙，不是 ，OK， 所以所以青龙一，这是，对呀，对，喂喂 ，Let me think， 嗯 ，Good morning， 嗯，哇，你那身边。Why I cannot find the good name? The what's your name? Ah, so Lin Lin Hui. Oh, Lin Hui. Hey, why you combine your first name? Ah, why you combine your first name? Are you are you Malaysian or Chinese? Malaysian, right? So you try to go. Okay, wait. I mean, no nationality, no races here. Okay, nationality. Okay, racist. Racist, ah. Lim Yi Hui. But. Ah. Zhao. Zhao. 赵赵宇轩，赵宇轩，赵静涵，赵静涵 ，OK。啊？林雨。雨烟。谁讲？我讲呢。李韵。李月，喂。First page. What's your last three? Ah, zero, zero, zero. Li Yu Zhang, ha. Li Yu Zhang. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, let's come back here. Uh, can you find what is del z over del r? Huh? Uh, what is del z over del r? So how many paths from z to r? Two. Two right, okay. So let's put down our Z, and then Z is in terms of X, Y, X and Y are in terms of I and X. Okay. So all together here, what do you get? So uh, don't have explicit equation, but this equation will be in terms of F or Z. Yeah, in terms of f of z. So what's the two path here? So you can differentiate uh, f with respect to x. Del x over del r plus del f over del y times del y over del r. Okay, so we will use the z and f uh, interchangeably. Okay, because z equals to f. Right. Okay, so what is del? So del f over del x, you can't really compute because f doesn't have form in x. So we just keep it as del f over del x. Yeah, but x over r, you can do it, right? Because we have x in terms of r, which is just 2 r after differentiating. And then del y over del r is 2 x. Okay, so this is the final answer. Yeah, 2R times del F over del X plus 2X over del X. 
So this, what does this mean? What does this mean? So this means that no matter what f I give you, as long as my x and y are defined as this, we can use this formula to calculate del z over del r. Okay. What you need is you just need to plug in a specific f and then do the partial and then sub it in here. Okay. Okay. So how how about the second derivative? How about the second derivative? Oh, I was the tree you need to draw. Differentiate the del f over del y. Okay. So del z over del r, sorry. Okay, so what am I doing? So uh let's see. So this is del over del r of del z over del r. Okay, so what you can do is you use this formula here. All right. Differentiate that thing. Differentiate that thing. Yeah, differentiate this thing. Uh, not need. Not, not need yet. Not yet. Okay, so we differentiate 2R over del x plus 2x of del f, del y. Okay. So you can see that, what you can see, okay? What can you see here? So you have product of function in terms of R, right? Because if you differentiate with respect to X, X you define in terms of, you know, of R. So there are two things in terms of R. So you need to use product in here, okay? But how to differentiate del F over del X with respect to R? You need to use what rule? chain rule again okay so your function now is del f over del x okay so you write it out del f over del x okay inside here got how many variable x and y okay and then x and y in term of s and uh in this case is r and x okay so similarly you need to do another tree for del f over del y okay Okay, so now I'm telling you that your function can change, okay? Your function can change, okay? Depend on what you want to differentiate. Okay, the function will change. Okay, so now our function is derivative. Okay, partial derivative become our function. Is it okay? Is it okay? Okay or not? No, okay. Uh, some of you not okay. Uh, okay, so see that this is a function. So let me write something. Mm -hmm. Let me call your name. Call it G X Y plus two X of H X Y. Okay, so you should see this derivative as another function. Okay, see it as another function. Okay, you should see it as another function. Okay, see see it as another function. You are differentiating another function. Okay, I don't care how is it like, but in this case, this is a partial derivative. Okay or not? Okay, you see this partial derivative as another function. Okay. So function differentiating uh differentiating composite function you need to do the chain rule yeah ming kai right ming kai <coughs> hey wait no ming kai meh ming kai ah okay so i i still confused you confused confused ah what? okay uh so are you happy with this, the first line here? Okay. So second line, we just substitute what we found just now. Okay. And then the third line, what, why we are using chain rule is because we are differentiating a function with respect to R, but you cannot find R here. Okay. R is hidden in the X. 
right? So they are like, mm, so this function here is actually in terms of x and y, but x and y is in terms of i and x. So in this way, we need to apply chain rule. Okay. So we apply chain rule to the function del f over del x. Okay, let me write it here. So this is a function in terms of x, y. Okay, but x, y is in terms of R, S again. So you have composite, composite of function. So you need to do chain rule. Yeah. Who is the new student coming in? Huh? Yeah. Yes, yes. Sorry? What name? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Su Jie Sen. Okay. Is it? Okay, better or not? Minghai. Okay. Whenever you have this uh, composite of function, right, you need to use the chain rule. Uh, no, you can still continue compute. Yeah, how to continue? Huh? Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. So, okay, so. So, what's the simplest one? You don't have G and H that you could Yeah, so you just keep it as second derivative of F. Yeah, you just keep it second derivative of F. Okay, so what is this question asking is, what happened does this uh, chain of variable does to this uh, second derivative of F? Okay, so, uh, okay, let's continue and finish this, right? Okay, so you see, now, uh, Abstract definition become very important now, right? Okay. So how to continue? Uh? What's the best way to write it out? So you use chain rule, right? Use chain rule. <laughs> uh, does everyone agree that when I differentiate the first term, it split out as these two terms of product rule? Okay, because you see this as 2r multiplied del f over del x. Okay, so you differentiate the first one and then multiply the second one. Then differentiate the second one, multiply the first term, first uh, term in the product. Okay. Ah. Uh. What do you mean? No, 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 I'm, I'm just computing the first term only. I haven't compute the second term yet. Yeah, 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 I only compute the first term. The first term split into two terms because of product rule. Uh, okay. Uh. Okay. Okay. So the second term split into two terms as well. So you got plus two x times del over del uh, Okay. All right. So I think the hardest part hardest part is this two, right? You see, you're differentiating a function, but this function uh, in terms of x and y, but you want to differentiate with respect to r. So this is the place you need to use chain rule, okay? So how you go this, how many way going from this function here to r? Okay, so we go back to this tree again. Okay, how many ways go from the function to r? There are two ways. You can go from x to r, 
you can also go from Y to R. Okay. Similarly for del F over del Y. Okay. Okay. So how many way going from the function to R? Okay, you need to see the tree. So how to build the tree? You need to know your function is defined on what variable. Okay. So in this case, del F over del X in terms of X and Y. And then X and Y further in terms of R and X. What do you mean by expand? again? We are expanding, but not again. What do you mean by again? F over there, X. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what do we get? So first we get two times del F over del X. Second, we get two R times what? There are two paths. Okay. There are two paths. So what's the edges here? The edges here. What's the edges? Edges from this function to X. Okay, it is differentiating the function with respect to x, which is second derivative of f with respect to x. Okay, and then going from x to r, you have del x over del r. Okay, and then the other path is differentiate f with respect to x, and then differentiate this with respect to y again, and then the other one is differentiate y with respect to r. Okay, so you can see that second derivative pop up in this edges here because I start with the first derivative. Okay, so it is differentiating this derivative with respect to x. Similar or not? Similar to here or not? So in this case here, we have dz over dx. So we just substituting the z as first derivative here, first partial derivative. Okay, so uh, so one ability of doing max right is you need to able to replace replace the function with any function. Okay, this this is what this is generalizing. Okay, this is generalizing. So generalize the uh, generalize the example. Okay, uh, okay. So we are generalizing the example. Okay, so now this function here become a special function, which is the first derivative. Okay, so we, yeah. Okay, generalizing the. So what are the two ways going from f, del f, del x to r? So first is going down the root, you have del over del x. Of, okay, let's just write it as second derivative for f times del x over del r plus second derivative, okay, mixed derivative. So mixed derivative, I write it in this way, times del y over del r. Okay, so this is the first term. Similarly, you do it for the second part. So the second part is zero, right? Differentiate, partial differentiate to x where they go up, huh? because it's a constant. And then plus, how many way from del f over del y to r? Also, two ways. Okay, so you also have two ways. Yeah. Okay. So fill in the edges. So when you go from del f over del y to x, so what's the edges you put coming? <coughs> Yeah, what's the edges you put on del f over del y to x? Del Yeah. What's the how you label the edges? How you label the edge? Huh? Okay, so you differentiate del f over del y with respect to x. Okay, so when you go for x to r, it's also the same method del x over del r. 
Okay. So you treat the whole first partial derivative as a function now. Okay. So similarly, the other side, you got del over del y on del f over del y. And then when you go from y to x, go from del y over del r. Okay. Confused or not? Daniel? Yes, sir. Confused. So where where do you confuse? Ah. The second? The second tree. You confuse. Okay. So do you know that when we label these edges, we need to differentiate the top function with respect to the bottom function. Okay, so this is how we obtain this uh, label here. Okay. For example, if I want to label y, the edges from y to x, I'll put their y over their x. Okay, but how, why do we care about this tree here? Why do you care about this tree? Because we want to differentiate del f over del y with respect to r. Okay. So you should treat this del f over del y a function, a function in x, y. Okay. So since it is a function in x, y, how can I differentiate with respect to r? There's no r inside, right? If this is just a function of x, y. But we say that x, y can be further defined using r and x. Okay. So there's a composite of function here. So when there's a composite of function, we need to use chain rule when we want to do differentiation. Okay. So that's why we need to make this tree here. Okay. So first, how to read this tree? This tree is you have this function defined in x, y, and then x, y is defined using rx. Okay. And then when you go, when you try to differentiate the function with respect to r, you need to see how many paths you have going from the function to r. And then when you go along the R, when you go along the path, you multiply the derivative. If you have different path, you need to add out the product. Okay. So in this case here, all together, what do we have? So there are two ways to go from del F, del Y to R. All right. So we need to multiply along when we go down to R. And then add up for different path. Plus times there y over there. Okay. So uh, if you simplify this, this is the final answer. Oh wait. Oh, you still can compute their x, their r, and their y, their r. So let's write out the final form. So the final form is this. Okay, so this is the final form. We cannot go further because f is not given. Okay, f is not given. So what you can see here is the second derivative of our function depend on the first derivative and the second derivative of the function. Okay, and then some contribution from your mm -hmm. reparameterization. Okay, so this is uh, the example. Yeah. Uh, any more question? Ask question, uh, because I don't know where you confuse. So please ask. Uh, how it become this? Uh? Okay, how it become this? Uh, so how it become this? You need to continue and compute. You need to further compute what is del x over del r. Do you know how to compute del x over del r? 
So let me write something up. R times del square f over del x square. Del x over del r, what is it? We have computed before, right? Differentiate x with respect to r. You just get 2r. Okay, so you get 2r. And then similarly, you differentiate um, differentiate del x over del y, uh, del y over del r, what do you get? You also get 2x. Okay, so then you uh, do the similar computation for the other one. Get 2r times del squared. Okay, and then you simplify this number. Okay or not? Okay. Any more question? More question? If you confuse, huh, you should ask now. Huh? If you go back, huh, you waste time. Yeah. So better waste time here. Huh? I mean, in principle, it's not, but uh, the kind of waste time doesn't count. I mean, the act is waste time, but the principle is not wasting time. Okay, good question. Any more questions? Ask until clear before you leave the class. Not yet, not yet. I mean, today, today. Huh? If no, then we will come back at uh, 10 05. Okay, if you have more questions later, you should ask. I won't be around. I want to go to the next one. Uh, not the same page, Jimmy and Cut down. So we don't want to Oh, <laughs> 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 Oh, Oh, Indonesia, okay, okay. Hey, who is beside Qi Xiao just now? Uh, who is the guy? Su Zi Hui, huh? Okay, okay. Su Zi Hui. Uh, Daniel. 
Daniel Bowin. Bisa Bowin? Ah, cannot hear. Can't hear. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, hey, we in front of one pay you. Depend. Yeah. Yeah. Depend. Like that. But I believe. Who's beside Depend? Ah. Hong Yiling, okay, Hong Yiling. Uh, that's good. Ah, that's good. 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 文具零哈，什么？然后，然后我问几声，然后问几声，我就想，我就想，现在这个，然后这个叫什么？他这个，嗯，你要买，等我一下，买牛啊。OK， 可以哈，好好好，就买牛，就快签完而已，差不多。快签完。哎呀，彭玉玲，哎，好，彭玉玲，彭玉玲，彭玉玲，花纹腰哈，花纹腰。OK， 比赛纹腰。Yao, Yao Cheng, okay, okay, good. No more people, right? Besides you. So, Chen Min. Because I don't know the other people. Oh, I know, I know them. Okay, Ko, Zhang, and Yu Fu, Yao, Wei Ni, Li Han. Yeah, I'm not going to be there. Okay. Who's in your side? Who's in your side? Who's in your side? Yes, there's no one. Oh, that's all you're in your side. 对，对，然后前面是那个啊，一不金瓜，哎，第一名哦，哎，真金瓜的，金瓜，金瓜第五名，第六名，金瓜哥，两，两，两，红鱼，比较红鱼，为什么？哦，红鱼，好，来，就是刚。拿那个力气，然后讲完了。嗯哼。什么时候补课？就是。对啦，你。嗯。刚刚你讲的力，就是努力，就是看努力。看这边说，就是他，就是下面这个，他这个二级是，是是是，这个二级导图是怎么出来的？为什么是？哎，因为。我们我们要 differentiate 的方程是这个，所以我们 differentiate 它 respect to x。嗯。因为 different， 嗯，这边没没有没没有那个没有就是。对。我也是这样，我我要连对。就是因为这个是从这里出来的，是吗？还是？我没有听见啊。这这个是从这里出来的，那为什么这边这边没有没有这个？嗯。这不是对二、啊？对二进行。对啊对啊对啊。为什么这里会有出来一个？你看你看你看你看。对二嘛，一分是这个对二嘛，这这一个对二嘛，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，对啊，教室里面也是老师，我是学生，教室外面就不是，是我的课。哇！哈哈哈哈哈！哈哈哈哈哈！有啥？有啥？你啊？啊，那这个我玩麦克，还念一个口就行。要付，又要付版费呢，版权费。啊，版权费可以，可以，可以，可以。他这个狮子不是最开始是这样的吗？然后你用那个球导，就是他球片导，不就左导右导，这样。对，然后放在这儿，对，没错。然后这一步走，对，然后这一步，这个怎么？这这个时候就是要，你看这里是 internal x， 对不对？但是这个 internal x， 对。我，对，我这个，所以所以所以所以啊，所以你看
其实 x 也有一个啊，所以意思说我们这里要用 c h a n n e l 对，对，我不能还用 c h a n n e l 这个不是这个。那个那个谁？哎，就那些了。谁？不是那个龙？对，这个这个。对。啊，你看，现在我们的 Z 变成这一个。现在我们。哎。哎，来这个 DS 我们 DZ 我们是 XY， 但是后来我们又把它写成 RX。RX。要想一下怎么说。哎，这个这个没有，没有，没有，没有，没有，所以我的笔嘞，所以 del 啊 del f x x f 这东西是 in term of 这个，但是呢，这个又 in term of 啊、uh, x OK， 对，所以你现在要 differentiate。这两边为 r， 对不对？对，所以这个东西就是一个圈入，因为你有 x， 有 r， 对。它这个，它要这和前面是这不一样，一样一样一样一样一样的一样。你现在要把这个看成一个方程的。一个，我我来看这一个方程，对，把它题目就是题目里面给这个方程，但是它这个方程，对对对对对对对对，对，然后，那我把它看成一个方程以后，以后我怎么用？先，所以你就开始一模一样喽，你看，比如说这一个嘛。对你要 differentiate z with respect to a，、um, 对不对？对，看这个方程嘛，对，但你就要从这个分开对分开 r， 这个一模一样，只是它的这个 z 变成这个形式吧。就是这个 z 变成这个形式，嗯、啊啊，一模一样出来的形式。其实还是其实其实还是就是同步一遍上面这种，这个这个分开的过程，同步一遍过程然后看出来就。<笑>给到一个，这结果是是哪？结果是这个，这个，对，就是这这个，这个，这一个，这一个是这一个，这一个是这一个，啊，然后我我看一下最后这个东西，这个是吧？两句后的，我我稍微要不就看一下。<laughs> okay, we'll start soon. Start soon. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Still, I want to repeat. Ah, uh, if you confuse in the class, ah, uh, we should settle inside the class. Okay. So don't bring confusion away. Okay. Uh. So, actually, these are like two-way relationship, right? Okay. Not just I want to tell you what I want to tell you, but you also need to try to learn. Okay. So there are two-way relationship here. Okay. So relationship is always not one way. Right. So it's always both way. Okay. If just one way, the the other person will be very tired, right? Okay, so we have to be both way. Okay, <laughs> okay. So let's continue. So continue with this uh, implicit function with two variables. So there's a formula here. If f x y equals zero, define y implicitly as a function of x, then we can differentiate dy over dx. And what does this mean? Uh? What does this mean? So let's give an example here, right? Uh, example here is very easy. So let's just take f x y equals to y minus x. Okay. And then we look at 
y minus x equal to zero. Right? Okay. So if y equals to x, do you know how to differentiate y with respect to x? Okay, it's just one. Okay, but these formulas give you oh, another way to compute it. D over dx equals to minus del f over del x because you already learned uh, partial derivative. Okay, so what is del capital F over x? Huh? Differentiate y minus x with respect to x and differentiate y minus x with respect to y. Huh? The first one you get minus one. The second one you get one. So minus minus one you get one. Okay. Formula. Okay. So so why formula is true? So let me show you quickly, very quick. Um, actually this 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 um formula here have extra condition. Del f over del y cannot be zero, right? Whenever you di divide, you cannot divide by something zero. So how to get this formula? So it's very quick. So we just start from del f x y, okay? And then we differentiate with respect to x. Okay, so how to differentiate x with respect to f? Huh? You need to use chain rule also. Okay. Why do you need to use chain rule? Huh? How does the chain rule apply here? What's the tree you have? Okay, you start with fxy. Okay, you start with fxy. So fxy are in terms of x and y. Okay, but why we have chain rule here? Why? 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 <laughs> so what happened to y? What happened to y? Huh? What happened to y? Because the condition here say define y implicit as a function of x. So we can write y in terms of x. Okay. So we have a chain rule here. Because x is equal to x. Okay. I mean, if you really want, we can go forever, but that's not necessary in here. Okay. Right. Yeah, from top you also can continue x y x y, but what's the point of doing that? Right. Okay. You can do that, but it's not necessary. Okay. Yes, because we want to find different uh, partial derivative with respect to x. So we need to check how many way we can go to x. What do you think? Differentiate x with respect to x, what do you get? One, no? Yeah, you get one. Okay. And then del f over del x. Okay, label the edges. So here we put dy over dx. Huh? Right. So here not del, huh? we put d huh? because there's only one variable. Okay. So by chain rule, what do we get? We have, we get del f over del x times dx over dx plus del f over del y times dy over dx equals zero. In this case here, what do we get? We get del f over del x times one plus del f over del y, dy over dx. So dy d over dx drop out from the chain rule. So can you see that after rearrange, we get the formula here? So from this equation here, after we rearrange, we get this formula. Can you see it? Wait that. So if I move del f over del x to the other side, I get negative, and then divided by del f over del y, which we, I get this formula here. Okay. Uh? Yeah, Chesian, what, what's your problem? Hmm. Don't copy first, listen to what I say. Yeah. 
Don't copy first. Listen to what I say first. Huh? Okay, so what do we have? After three diagram, right? Okay, so what do we have? We have F X capital F equal to zero. Okay, so we can differentiate both sides with respect to X. Okay, we differentiate both sides with respect to X. So you differentiate zero, you still get zero. But what is differentiating the capital F? Okay, so we try to apply chain rule here. Okay, why chain rule makes sense? Because the Y variable given by the condition here, it can be written as a function of X. Okay, so everything can write in terms of X here. Okay, that's why we get this uh, chain rule. So how many ways going from capital F to X using this tree? Two ways. Okay, so go along the path, you need to multiply the derivative and then you need to take the sum of the two half. Okay, so in the end, we got this equation here. Del F over del X times DX over DX plus del F over del Y times DY over DX. Okay, and then from here, the formula will drop out. Yeah. So the condition here is del F over del Y cannot be zero. Okay, cannot be zero. Cannot be zero. You cannot divide by something zero. Okay, let's look at one example, another example here. Find dy dx if x cubed plus y cubed equals to 6xy. So you have an implicit function here. Okay, implicit function. So how to find dy dx? Huh? What's the first step you need? Capital F. So how to find capital F? Capital F have to be equals to zero okay so what's the candidate here huh so 6xy minus x cube minus y cube equals to zero okay sure you can go the other way you can go the other way x cube plus y cube Mm, minus 6xy equals 0. Okay? So you can do both ways. They should get the same answer. Okay? Yes, because you have, you see, you are dividing df over dx by df over dy, right? So both sides you will in, introduce negative. So negative will cancel out in the end. Okay? Uh, let's pick one of them and then work it out. You want to use red one. Okay, use red one. Okay, let's do the red one. So we pick F2 equals to S cubed Y cubed minus 6XY. Okay, so what is uh, for DY, DX equals to minus del F over del X. Okay, del x over del f over del y. Okay, so let's do this computation here. So at the numerator, you get 3x squared minus 6y over 3y squared minus 6x. Okay, all together, you get 2y minus x squared over x squared minus 2x. Okay. So if you don't believe, right, you can use the first one and then try and compute. And then you should get the same answer. Okay, so it doesn't uh, depend on how you put your function. Okay. So far, okay. Question, question. Any question? So how how you think about this geometry meaning? How you think about this geometry meaning? Hey, what's going on? Yeah. Plus six. Plus six. Y is plus six. This one is outside. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. So what's the geometry meaning here? So this is a surface, right? Okay. Surface equal to zero. So it's a level surface. Okay. Level. Okay. You have a surface. When you cut it, you become a level curve. Okay. So in the level curve, you can compute what is dy dx. So you have a surface here, okay? You have a surface, okay? In the R three, wait. Let me draw the R three first. You have a surface here, okay? Then you cut it using a plane. You get level curve, okay? Level curve leaving on, leaving on uh, R two, okay? So dy dx is the rate of change on this level curve, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a technique. So later, this technique will apply to question that you need to do. Okay. Huh? What question? You know what? Implicit differentiation. Uh, you can. You can. When you do implicit differentiation is what we do what we do here this is implicit right i mean um yeah 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 the whole thing we do is implicit differentiation just that we write it in the form that dy ds equal to something that's all <clears throat> okay okay yeah it's the same it's the same it's the implicit just that we uh Write it as the quantity that we interested in. Okay, so next uh, we can uh, generalize this. Okay, generalize this to three variable, four variable, five variable, six variable, and so on. So let's say we generalize to three variables. We have um, two partial derivatives to consider as well. Okay, and then these two partial derivatives also for, uh, follow a similar formula. So del z over del x is equal to del f over del x over del f over del z. And then del z over del y is equal to minus del f over del y over del f over del z. You know how to memorize this or not? Okay. Although, although these are not fraction, right? But if you think of it as a fraction, okay, this is a uh, mm, heuristic. Uh, Heuristic meaning uh, maybe it's not quite true, but it is worth always when we do computation. Right? So if you treat this as a fraction, right? So you will cancel out the del f where you get del z over del x. But make sure you remember there's an extra sign here. Extra sign here because of the equal equation here. Okay. The equation here will introduce the extra sign. Okay, so if you forget which one is the top, which one at the bottom, you just remember how you do the fraction. Okay, let's say in the exam you forgot what to put on the top, what to put on the bottom, you just remember how the fraction multiply. Yeah. Okay, but remember there's an extra negative term here because uh, of the equation. Because, okay. Okay, uh, let's do one more example before we move on. So let's try and do what is del z over del x here. Okay. So del z over del x here by formula is del f over del x over del f over del z. Okay. So what's our capital F x y here? So it's given s cubed times e to the power y plus z minus y times sine x minus z. Okay, so we need to compute the first derivative with respect to x first. What do you get? What's the answer you get? What is differentiating capital F with respect to x? Hmm? 3 square times e to the 
y plus z minus y times cos of x minus z. Okay. Del f over del y, s cubed e to the y plus z minus sine x minus z. Okay. Can follow? Okay, so equals to, so we put these two numbers together, put these two functions together. Okay, so that's all, this is the answer. I think cannot simplify further anymore. Which one? Where is plus? Where is plus? Yeah. In this one, this one. No, I put minus outside. Yeah, here is a plus. Oh, okay, okay. I haven't finished computing yet. So actually, this is a del f over del z. Sorry, I put the wrong thing. So this is this one. So this is s cubed e to the y plus z plus y cos x minus z. Yeah, I substitute the wrong, wrong, wrong. I should substitute this. Hmm? Del f, del f, del x, correct or not? And then del f, del z, correct or not? And then I put these two together. Okay. Okay. Correct. Del f, del x, correct. Del f, del z, correct or not? And then I put these two together. Okay. 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 Good. Good. Okay, any question before we go to the next uh next part? Any question before we go to the next part? So what's the geometry meaning here? <coughs> So we got a, a function. We got a graph in R4. R4 is it? Yeah, we got a function, a graph in R4. Okay. Let it equal zero. We cut it at a level surface. Okay. So R4 drop to R3. Is it? Surface in R3. So surface in R3, we have two dimension, two possible derivative to go. Okay, we have two derivative to go. We can go along x or we can go along y. Okay. Mm. Okay. Where we got a level surface. Okay. Continue. Continue. So next part is a uh, directional derivative. Okay. So there's no reason why we just uh, differentiate with respect to x or y. Okay, we can differentiate with respect to any direction. Okay, any unique direction we can do. Okay. So how do we do it? How we do it? Uh, so for any unique vector u, okay, the directional derivative is the limit of x not y not plus the direction of your unique vector. Okay, and then minus the value at the point. 
Do, do you get what I say, what I mean about directional derivative? No one. Okay, let me draw some picture. Let you imagine a bit. So let's say we pick the old favorite, old time favorite sphere. Okay. So we take the old time favorite sphere. So let's us take this point here. We want to find the tangent. Okay. So just now what we do, we found using x direction. Okay, x direction we find. What is fx? Y direction we find what is fy. Okay. So the question now is can we go other direction or not? Okay, can we go other direction or not? The answer is yes. Okay, we can go any direction u. Okay. And then make sure your u is a unique vector. Okay, make sure it is a unique vector. And then we can go a little bit away from this direction, a little bit away from the other direction. Yeah, so this is called the directional derivative. So along this direction, what's the slope? Along the other direction, what's the slope? Okay, right. Can you imagine? So you have you will have different slope at different place, right? In the plane. Yeah. So yeah. So all the tangent and yeah, all the tangent vector you found from different direction, they should live at the same tangent plane. That you found using fx and f1. Okay, yeah, this is the idea. Okay, so you not only know the slope here on the x direction or the y direction, you also know the other direction. Okay, and then all these tangent vector, right, live on the same plane. Okay, live on the same plane. Okay, any big, bigger object or not? Someone got sphere or not? Okay. This one. Uh, uh, so let me see. Uh. <laughs> That's too bad. Uh. Okay, maybe maybe use this one. Okay. So everyone can see here. Uh, can see here. Okay. So you you imagine this is a surface. Okay, surface over this. So if you want to find tangent point, tangent plane at this point, right? Okay. So what I point out is the normal vector. Okay, you should start imagining a plane there already. Okay, so we can go along x direction or go along y direction. All of them are on the plane, but you also can go along the other direction, the other direction, the other direction. But all these direction, right, are living on the same plane. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is the idea. Ah. No, unit vector is just uh unit vector is just a uh, direction on the no domain, right? On the domain, huh? Sorry, magnitude is one is okay, but the direction. So this unit vector here, right? See, this unit vector here is R two, so it's living on the domain. Okay, it's living on the domain. So we take x, take y, and then take the other direction u. So let me draw something here. So Okay, uh, let me change color. So we have u, okay, it should be straight uh, because it's a vector. So this is u, okay, and then the length of u is one. Okay, so we look at this direction and then see how the top change. Okay, we look at this direction and then see how this change. Look at that direction and then see how this change. Right? Can make sense or not? Okay, we look at the x direction and then see how the surface change. Look at this direction, see how the surface change. On one point, on one point, single point. When we talk about the relative, we always talk about the point, at the point. Okay. At different direction, so in this direction, and then how this change. Okay, how this change. How this change. Okay. 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 Uh, so um, so always this uh, first definition is here is um, intuitive but hard to compute. Okay, hard to compute. So how? So we have a theorem here. So the theorem is, let's say our f is differentiable. 
okay? And F, then F will have a directional derivative at any unit vector U. So how to find this DU here, okay? We don't use this limit definition anymore. We just use the partial derivative of X and partial derivative of Y and the vector together we found this formula here, okay? What is this formula? So I spoiler a bit. So this is exactly, um, this is exactly the vector of partial derivative dot with the vector AB, okay? This is how you find the directional derivative of any direction, okay, with unique vector. So this is the dot product of the vector of um, partial derivative with the unit vector, okay? So you don't need to go through this limit definition, okay? Don't need to do this. What you do is this one. Because usually for this course, you deal with a differentiable f. So you just use this to find. Okay? So you want to find the directional derivative, what you need? You need the two partial derivative, x and y, and then dot product with the direction you want. And then it must be unique vector because later will be useful. Later you will see why we need a uh, unique vector. Because in this case here, right, unique vector doesn't really matter, right? Doesn't really matter. But later you will see that it has some physical quantity that uh, we want it to be unique. Okay, but So I mean by right, the definition could be non-unique vector because we just put vector in. But later we'll see why, why we need unique vector. Okay, so, yeah, so the general picture is here. So if you see the blue part here is the surface. And then the red arrow here is U. Okay. So if you look at U, and then you see how the slope changed above it. Okay. How the slope changed at the surface in the direction of U. And S0, Y0, Z0. Okay. So if you look at the other direction, so for example, you have a uh, U2, okay? Then you need to see the slope on the other side. Okay, maybe here. Okay, make sense? So du2 is here, for example, okay? And then the idea is every vector you, vector, tangent vector you found must live on the same plane. Same plane, huh? on the same linearization. Okay, linearize because become flat already. Curve become flat. So if it is differentiable, that means when you go close to that point, you can approximate your point well. Okay, so this is the whole idea in one picture. Question? So we proceed to example. Huh? Okay, uh, so let me see what's the next thing. All right, so uh, we won't prove this. Okay, let's skip the proof. So let's use it. Okay, let's use it. Let's use this. So let's say we have a function. Okay, s cubed minus 3xy plus 4y squared. So they already plot this function out. Okay, they want to find a directional derivative at the point one two, okay. At the point one two, want to find a directional derivative with what direction? What's the vector here? Making an angle pi over six with the positive axis. So let's draw it up. X and uh, Y. So pi over six. So what is the vector that has pi over 6 angle with x, y. Why is this vector here? Uh, how to find that? I mean, the easiest way to find is to form this uh, triangle. Okay, 90 degree right angle triangle. And then what's the opposite and the adjacent of this? Uh, Huh? Yeah, what's the formula? What's the height? 
Huh? Cos. Which one? Cos. Which one is cos pi over 6? Adjacent. Okay. okay. Cos pi over 6. And then? Sine pi over 6. Okay. So this is one of the uh, one of the vector that does the job. Right. Okay. But we want unique vector. Is this a unique vector or not? Huh? Is this a unique vector? Yeah, you try. So what's the length of this? So is the length of this vector one? One, right? Okay. Cos square theta plus sine square theta equals to one. Okay. You can see that if we just scale this vector, right, it's still pi over six to the positive axis, but we want the unique vector. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what's the exact form of this vector here? What is cos pi over 6? Square root 3 over 2 and 1 over 2 for sine pi over 6. So, so, uh, so can we apply the theorem or not? Can we apply the theorem? Why? Huh? Why can we apply a theorem? Let f be differentiable, okay? So if is f differentiable or not? Yes, right, because this is a polynomial function. So polynomial function is always differentiable. Not just continuous, but also differentiable. Actually, we call uh, polynomial function smooth because it can be differentiable, differentiate infinitely many times. So it is smooth. So by theorem, what's the formula? Hey, Guan Tian, you stop writing already. Uh. Leave group chat already. Shut down. OK. Uh, so what's the formula of uh, du? F equals to fx at ab times a plus fx, fy at uh, x, y. Hey, sorry, sorry. X, y. Stupid. Okay, x, y and b. Okay. So, a, what are these two numbers here? What fx with respect to x, y, what is it? E x squared minus 3y, okay, times a, what is a, square root 3 over 2 in our case, plus minus 3x plus 8y times 1 over 2. Okay, um, I think uh, we can, uh, You can further simplify, but we can uh, do the substitution at 1, 2. And all together, we will get 13 minus 3 square root 3 over 2. I see if you get 13 minus 3 over 3 times square root 3 over 2. Substitute x equals to 1, 2 equals to, uh, y equals to 2. Okay. Write out okay. all the substitution. It times one plus eight times two. Okay. Yeah, so you do all the combination, you will get 13 minus 3 square root 3 over 2.
Okay. Question, question, question. Any question? Any questions? So far, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so just now we say that uh, there's another form. We can write it, right? We can write it as a dot product, right? Okay. So we know AB is the direction that we want to differentiate. So what's the vector of the partial derivative? What's this vector here? So this vector here is what we call the gradient of F. Okay. So you see our gradient upgrade already go from one dimensional to two dimensional. Okay. Now it's a vector. Our gradient of F is a vector now. Okay. So we define the gradient of a function f to be the vector del f del x comma del f del y. And okay, so this is our gradient of vector. Okay, so gradient upgrade already from function of one variable to two variable become two dimensional. So if you have three variable function, it becomes three variable, uh, three dimensional. Okay, three dimensional vector. So this is the uh, spoiler just now we, I gave. So the derivative, the derivative, uh, directional derivative of f is the dot product between the gradient function with the unique vector u. Okay, let's do one example, right? So find the directional derivative of the following function x squared y cubed minus 4y at the point 2 minus 1 in the direction of the vector 2i plus 5j. Okay. So can we straight away take the dot product between this vector and the uh, gradient or not? Huh? You have to find unique vector. Okay, so you need to scale the vector to unique vector. So this means here, so we need to find d of the vector scale to length one equals to the gradient of x f x y dot product with the scale vector direction vector. Okay. So what's the uh, length of this function? Is square root two square plus five square is square root twenty nine. So what's the gradient here? What's in other words, what is del f, del x, and del f, del y? Okay. Del f, del x, del f, del y is two x y cube x square y square minus four. Dot product with no product with what sizes with uh, one over square root twenty nine of the direction vector two five. Okay, so you need to compute all these things. Huh? Question. Okay, so you expand this, you get four over square root twenty nine x y cube plus. 15 over square root 29 s square y square minus 20 over square root 29. Or uh, you can, I mean, you can. Um, so in the end, we want to evaluate this at 2, 1, 2 minus 1, which you get 32 over square root 29. I'll remain in the vector form. Uh, I mean, it's equivalent that you uh, just substitute your two one two minus one here. Yeah. Yeah. At the end, you still substitute. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, right? In other words, what you do is uh, you also can do d 
of this directional uh, two minus one. Actually, you can evaluate your gradient at that point first, and then you do dot product. Also can. Okay. So depend on what uh, question one you want. What the question want you to find? Uh, you can be differently. Um, okay. Uh, so, should we go one example or should we? No, 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 no. I cannot dismiss yet. Uh, okay. Let let let's talk about this. Tell. Uh, let's see why we want to use unit vector. Okay. Let's see why we want to use unit vector. So this uh, function of three variable. I leave you leave it to you to do it, or we will do it in the start of next class. So I want to tell you why we use unit vector here. Okay. So why are we using unit vectors here? So um, derivative usually usually related to rate of change. Okay. Rate of change. So what's the maximum rate of change here? So a function increase most rapidly at p in the direction of the gradient with the rate. Uh, the length of the gradient at that point. So why is this true here? So let's look at this uh, equation here. So we have rate of change of f at a point p, okay, equals to the gradient at that p dot product with the direction. Okay. So what's dot product? Remember the Formula for dot product. What's dot product? Length of the product of two, uh, the product of length of two vector with the cos of the angle between them. Okay. So when is this number the largest? Cos theta, cos theta equals to one. In other words, the angle is zero. Okay. So first of all, these two, uh. These two, uh, these two what? These two, uh, they, oh, what, what am I to say? No, no, no. Cos, cos, sorry. When uh, cos theta equals to one, uh, uh, one, theta equals to zero or two pi, right? Okay. So these two, these two directions have to agree. Okay. And then if the, Angle, uh, if the length of u is one, then this is just equals to the uh, gradient of my function. Okay. So the gradient of my function determine my rate of change. Okay. Gradient of my function determine my rate of change. Okay. If you put different scaling of u right, you just scale it differently. Okay. But we don't want the scale here. We just want the gradient of my function. Okay, so the gradient of my function, the length of gradient of my function, determine the change of my uh, original function. Make sense or not? So directional derivative and gradient. Okay. Previously, we equate these two terms, right? The gradient is just the slope and just the derivative for function of one variable. But now the gradient is two dimensional. So two dimensional, how you get a number? You take the length so vector go to number you take length length of vector okay yeah from a vector how to get a number you just take the length okay can see or not okay huh? so here says that the directional derivative will depend on just the gradient Yeah. Uh, we will uh, recall this again next time and then we will do some more example. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. Around week 14, haven't confirmed yet. Yeah, around. Last quiz already. Yeah, last quiz. Huh? Around week 14, around. Yeah, later we will make announcements. 
ให้ดักกอดักกอผมว่าผ